I mentioned a recent video on the Tidepool Orchestra channel that I hate Power Rangers by Light Common Rider, which seems really hypocritical when you think about it, so I'd like to explain my reasoning right quick, and it boils down to these two characters. <laughs> I mean, there are a ton of other reasons here, but I don't want to be here all day. So I'm just going to compare these two. Tell me, Oliver. The Green Mighty Morphin Power Ranger and Sakasa Kadoya, Kamen Rider Decayed. Both are sort of modern flagships in the respective series, and coincidentally in the last couple of months, both of them have returned after being gone for years, each with a new belt buckle that makes them stronger. So yeah, let's compare why someone might like one more than the other. I'll discuss the characters themselves, the actors portraying them, and the new comeback. And maybe I can convince some of you guys why I think which one is better. Starting out, I'm not sure if there's anyone who's heard of Spawn's Power Rangers and hasn't heard of the Green Ranger. He started out as a villain in his series, but after a good deal of dramatic tension and an entire story arc devoted to him, he became the leader of the good guys. I know it seems like I'm sort of glossing over this entire story arc, but in the grand scheme of things, that's kind of what you have to do. I mean, check it. Tommy is... I mean, it, it was just super short, the time when he was actually a bad guy. He's most known as being the Green or the White Ranger because of storyline and production reasons, where he lost his green powers, and it was a very important plot, critical point in the year 1995 that he lost his Green Ranger outfit and became the White Ranger. Like, the green powers are gone at that point. In 1995, that was 23 years ago. <laughs> Do you understand <laughs> 23 years. But he got the White Ranger suit. <laughs> and then at season 4, he moved on to the Power Rangers Zeo, which was the Red Ranger. He became stronger than before. You know, he was the Red Zeo Ranger, became stronger. And then he continues in to the next season, he was even the Red Turbo Ranger for a short while. But then that all took a back seat for a good 8 years before he became the. Yeah, you know, the mentor of the next dinosaur series, which was Power Rangers Dino Thunder. He actually had an entire episode where he fought his inner demons. Uh, he, as the Black Ranger, fought the Green, the White, Mighty Morphins, the Red Zeo. Like, in actually the opposite order, because of course the Green Ranger is the strongest. So do, 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 do. I'm so tired of it. And that was basically it. Uh, honestly, the less said about Super Mega Force, the better. <laughs> the main thing you need to remember about Tommy is he was a villain. He was a villain 23 years ago. And for some reason, that's all anybody will ever remember from him. <laughs> if you if you ask somebody, oh, who's the Green Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, they'll they'll remember that one. If you ask them, who's the Black Dino Thunder Ranger, they might not remember. Or even the Red Zeo Ranger, because nobody remembers anything past Mighty Morphin for some reason, even though it's been 20, 23 years. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Kamen Rider Decade, on the other hand, he started out in 2009, and it was the 10 year anniversary of Kamen Rider's Heisei era, which started in 2000, you know, 2000 and 2009. Now, the interesting thing about being an anniversary series in 2009 for Kamen Rider is that he actually gained the ability to transform into any of the other previous writers from 2000 to 2009. Sporadically. Uh, in the first episode, he had the ability to turn into any of them and then automatically use all their powers, but then later on, like right after that episode, he had these story arcs where he would go into each of the previous writers' show universes and like fight them to the death, take their powers, and he became known as the Destroyer of Worlds. Sort of against his will, he didn't really want the position, but that's just, you know, that's just what you do <laughs> when you're coming right or decayed, and you, you're forced to travel beyond random dimensions. Like, he had no actual control over where he was going, and everybody just called him the Devil, and he was always the Destroyer of Worlds, no matter what happened. Like, he tried to be the hero. He tried to. But everybody just assumed he was a villain, which is just... I don't know. The The main thing that you have to remember <laughs> about Kamen Rider Decayed the show? Not very good. Kamen Rider Decayed the character? He carried the entire thing on his shoulders because he was that charismatic and funny. <laughs> he was like the mic of our channel. Uh, you know, just the spirit of everything. Just... <laughs> uh, his his heart 
was in the right place. I mean, yeah, okay, there was that one time where it turned out that he was basically the figurehead of a Nazi organization, but eh, eh. here's where it starts getting interesting. <laughs> recently, and then by recently, I mean, I want to say August or September of this year, 2018, there was an episode of the Nickelodeon-produced Neo Spawn era episode of Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel, an adaptation of Shuriken Sentai and Ninja, episode 10. <laughs> Quite the mouthful. Dimension in danger. <laughs> in the episode, Tommy comes back and is basically... Well, okay, the way the episode is set up, and I'll be fair, everybody thinks Tommy is the villain. When he's not, actually, because it's, it turns out it's an evil robot duplicate that just took on Tommy's physical attributes in order to try to trick all of the other rangers because they automatically assume anything that Tommy says is accurate, no matter how weird he's acting, because he's Tommy and he's the greatest Power Ranger of all. Because everybody loves the Green Mighty Morphin Power Ranger. But it wasn't Tommy, it was a robot, and then the actual real Tommy shows up using the green powers, which, as I said before, were destroyed <laughs> back in 1995. <laughs> 23 years ago, but it's okay, because he has a Master Morpher, and that is the entire explanation of the Master Morpher, is he says, I have a Master Morpher, <laughs> and it allows him to transform into any of the previous forms he had, and in the extended director's edition scene of the fight, which, why is there extended versions of Power Rangers episodes... That's great. <laughs> but in the extended edition, they actually go through and he uses every one of his forms against every one of the forms of the robot until he reveals it's a robot that has incredibly shoddy, I'm talking Terminator 1 style robot effects. But again, 2018 Power Rangers kids show. That's fine. The part that's not fine is he actually is the problem and the solution to every single thing happening in the episode. Tommy Oliver shows up, he takes on the opponent, Tommy Oliver, <laughs> uh, has a fight scene with him. Mind you, they brought in other former actors to try to bring out the cast, but whatever. <laughs> he shows up, he defeats himself, and then at the end he uses the Master Morpher to even summon the White Falco Zord from Power Rangers Mighty Morphin Season 3, which took place in, golly gosh dang, 2004 or 2005? <laughs> the White Power Ranger Zord, which I'm not sure if that one is technically destroyed or not, but the main thing is the Zords should not be able to be summoned out of the Morphers. So the Master Morpher just has way too much power for having no explanation at all. <laughs> like, they could have even just given him the... They just had seasons where they had all these Power Rangers who could transform into other Power Rangers. Just give him the little the Gokai phone. Here's the fun thing, though. The same thing happened just last week in in uh, Kamen Rider Zio. Not not Power Ranger Zio. Kamen Rider Zio. Please excuse me while I drink some Rockstar at midnight. Delicious. I am not that great. So, Kamen Rider Zio. Kamen Rider Zio is the 20th anniversary series. So, <laughs> of the Kamen Rider Heisei um, group, but a couple of caveats to that. The Heisei generation in Japan is ending soon, so it's also the final Kamen Rider Heisei production. It's also has a higher budget, and they've done different anniversary series before. Basically, it's doing the same thing that Kamen Rider Decay did, where it breaks up into two episode story arcs, this time actually bringing in the previous actors, uh, having plots where they lose their powers, like, that's just part of the whole show. <laughs> and then they show that the actors, the previous common writers, can still do things without their powers. <laughs> Which I love, because not only does common writer Zio give character development to the main characters, but also any returning characters, they also give story arc character development too. <laughs> Well, not making it so that they just show up and save the day 
with their older abilities. Which is... So anyway, Decade shows up. <laughs> the newest episode of, De of uh, Common Raider Zio that show that aired last week that made me think of the Power Rangers thing had... Uh, it was about Common Raider Ghost from 2015, and they brought in the actress for that. But then suddenly, surprise, Decade shows up, and surprise, he uh, beats up the main characters. And then, surprise, he leaves. He has a new belt buckle, <laughs> but because of the way that Common Rider Decay is set up, because of the way Common Rider Decay is set up, we have explanations for where he got the belt. We don't have that for Power Rangers. No. And here's the main difference between uh, how Decade and, and, and the Green Ranger work. When the Green Ranger shows up, he saves his day by himself. He just magically has new abilities that aren't explained very well, and saves the entire day by himself, robbing the main characters of that show, of any and all character development. Whereas, on the flip side, when Commander Eric Decade shows up and does almost the same thing, he stays as an antagonist. He becomes an antagonistic force that the, the main characters actually have to overcome which gives them character development. <laughs> it's just it's so stupid. Look, I'm not going to pretend I'm not biased because clearly I have a bias here. But I want to take a moment before we leave to actually talk about the actors. Jason David Frank is the actor for the Green Mighty Morphin Power Ranger. And you can look at any and every interview with that actor, you can look at every single way that he presents himself in public, and you'll notice just a series of connections here that present him, that paint him as being a fucking douche. I'm sorry for my language, but he was actually pulled out of the Power Rangers movie screening. This was, what, 2016 or 2017? When the live-action, like, Krispy Kreme Power Rangers movie showed up, Jason David Frank was at the premiere, <laughs> filming it with his cell phone camera, he was being pulled out of the premiere, and he's like, but don't you know who I am? I'm not trying to pirate it. I'm just trying to pirate the scene that I'm in as a cameo. <laughs> like, he was trying to show off to all of his fans online <laughs> that he was in the movie by pirating the movie <laughs> that he was in. <sighs> Masahiro Inoue, the actor who plays Kamen Rider Decade, who plays uh, Sukasa Kitoe, who becomes Kamen Rider Decade, which is... <laughs> he actually stays in character no matter what. There's a story that, um, what was it, for Garo, for the filming of Garo, Masahiro Inoue shows up to the film set, just completely unannounced, just starts walking around saying, ah, so this is the world of Garo. Or, you know, the Japanese transliteration of that. And he finds the movie director, <laughs> and he asks for an autograph, and this is an actual story that you can find online. <laughs> Not only does the movie director sign an autograph for him, but he's like, what was that that you had with you? I, I asked you, why am I signing a Kamen Rider Decayed card? <laughs> Which is amazing, because this means that the actor who portrays Kamen Rider Decayed walks around with Kamen Rider Decayed cards, which is like the transformation device he uses, and just ask random movie directors to sign them? It's pretty great. <laughs> anyway, my main points. Main takeaway. Well, Power Rangers will bring back the Green Ranger as a messianic, mess, messianic character who will save the day all by himself? Kamen Rider Decade always comes back as an antagonistic force for the main characters to overcome. That's the main difference between them. And that's why I think a Kamen Rider is a little bit better than Power Rangers. <laughs>
me know if you agree or disagree. Bye.